a Louisiana mayor abruptly resigns from office. Then within days of her resignation, she's booked into jail, accused of raping a minor while she was in office. It's a very serious crime. And I think that it's important that it be recognized as such. 42-year-old Misty Roberts faces charges of third-degree rape and contributing to the delinquency of juveniles. According to authorities, they began their investigation on July 26, when the Beauregard Parish Sheriff's Office requested the Louisiana State Police Special Victims Unit investigate a complaint against the former mayor. Investigators interviewed two juveniles, one of which was the alleged victim. Both would confirm Roberts allegedly had sexual intercourse with the young victim while she was mayor. It seems to be, oddly enough, that when I look at the people that I've evaluated and we look at some of the high profile cases, it's not that this is somebody who is, um, you know, struggling financially, struggling career wise, unattractive, unmarried. We tend to find people who are the opposite of that when we look at offenders. And so I think I don't think it's a matter of this person doesn't know better as much as it is another a number of other things that are going on for that person. A warrant for Roberts's arrest was issued, but she would ultimately turn herself into police. I think whenever we hear about a female who's been accused of some sexual offense, the immediate reaction is surprise, shock. Um, unfortunately, all too often disbelief. Um, it's something I've certainly seen in my clinical practice back in those days. And in my forensic practice, I've, I've been involved in evaluating a number of women who were accused of, of sexual abuse. But I think it is something that we tend to, to view with really, like I said, just being stunned because that's not who we think about when we think about somebody who is a sexual abuser. Forensic psychologist Dr. Joni Johnston says she's evaluated numerous women offenders convicted of sex crimes and explains their motivations for committing the heinous offenses vary. It's a relatively diverse group, as it is with male sex offenders. Um, so when you look at female offenders, the most common one that we think about is that, OK, you know, some man must have put her up to this. That's typically what people tend to think. And in reality, that's not the case. About a third of women who sexually offend um, are doing so in collaboration with a male. So either to please, the, you know, to please the man, to keep the relationship, or as part of a partner dynamics, which means about two thirds are solo offenders. And of those, we do find kind of a diversity. We have you know, women who sadly come from a you know, a, a number of generations where you know, incest and, and sexual abuse has been a part of their upbringing for a number, you know, for generations. And they oftentimes will abuse their own children. And then we look at who's likely to abuse children outside the home. We see a couple of different, I guess, types, if you will. One being uh, the one that we're familiar with is what's kind of colloquially called the teacher lover, the person who is in a caretaking or nurturing role. Uh, and they're, they somehow convince themselves that they fall in love with this person. And in their mind, they see it as a consensual relationship. There's a kind of a denial that this is a power imbalance. There's no sense, there's no consent when you have a minor and an adult, particularly when you have a teacher or somebody in a position of power. Um, and then you see, you know, more rarely the person who has poor boundaries, they're doing things, for example, like providing alcohol to their son or their daughter and their friends. They're partying. They almost want to see themselves as part of the group. And then something happens along those lines. But through an attorney, the former public official would deny all the claims against her. In a statement to local station KPLC, Roberts's attorney would say, quote, It is my honor to represent Misty Roberts. My client learned last night of a warrant despite not being contacted to be interviewed prior to investigators obtaining the warrant. My client maintains her innocence and as it stands, she is in fact innocent. We trust the public will respect her constitutional presumption of innocence, which is fundamental to our system of justice. Misty and her family are very grateful for the support they have received from their friends and neighbors, and we look forward to putting this unfortunate situation behind them. I think that the language is always so significant. So obviously in this case, we have an attorney representing a client, and so he has to choose his words very, very carefully. But I think a bigger picture, really, Elizabeth, is that the language that I'm seeing in the media, if I think represents, a, to a large extent, our trouble with this topic still you know, accused of having sex with a minor. Um, I've seen that many times in relation to this story. And we're not talking about somebody having sex with somebody else. If these allegations are true, we're talking about a sexual offense. You know, we're talking about rape. And so I think it's really important that we pick and choose our words wisely. Um, and I think it does, again, attest to the fact that 
we still as a society have a difficulty believing any victim of sexual abuse, male or female, and there are particular challenges for boys who are victims of sexual abuse, it, particularly when the alleged perpetrator is a female, because there weren't that many years ago when this, you know, if this is true, this person would have been, you know, slapped on the back and said, how lucky are you? Or this is a rite of passage or, or those kinds of things. You know, it, it's only been the past 20 years we've recognized this as something that's a crime as opposed to something that to be proud of. Shortly before Roberts was charged with third degree rape, she abruptly resigned from her mayoral office, a position she's held for nearly 15 years. According to a report by KPLC, the now disgraced mayor was being investigated for alleged misconduct while in office. According to the report, a special meeting for the DeRitter City Council was called for a Tuesday, July 30th to consider an investigation into the misconduct allegations. At that time, Roberts was supposed to be away from City Hall on leave for more than two weeks, as the council president said her leave began on Friday, July 26, and would continue through August 10th. But in a stunning turn of events, on July 27th, just a day after Roberts's leave began, she suddenly announced she would be resigning from office. In a statement written by her, Misty Roberts would address her fellow city council members, writing, for nearly 15 years, my love and passion for DeRitter has been my foundation while serving as mayor. I will forever be proud of what we have been able to accomplish together. This role has rewarded me with many great relationships. I am humbled to have witnessed the hard work that took a community to come together and overcome through unprecedented times. However, I must adjust my focus and priorities. Please accept this letter as my formal resignation effective today. To the residents of the city, thank you for your trust, love, and support in me to lead our city into our future of greatness. My love for DeRitter will never waver. That announcement would come just five days prior to Roberts turning herself in. It's unclear at this time what the misconduct was in reference to or if it had anything to do with a criminal investigation into her. But Dr. Johnston says it's probably best for Roberts to step down. Well, one thing I would imagine, I mean, you know, having allegations such as these, you know, are obviously going to be incredibly disruptive, not only professionally. I mean, that's, that's a very difficult thing to do, I think, to go into work every day. If, you know, facing these allegations, particularly in a small town where, as you said, everybody knows everybody. But I think more, and more importantly, I'm, I'm hopeful, and I, I would imagine this is the case, she needs to focus on her family, particularly her shoulder right now. And so it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, I'm not sure from a political standpoint what would have been the best way to navigate that in terms of stepping down and how those these allegations are related to her doing that. But I do know that you know being accused of something like this, whether it's true or not, is going to be in, have a, a significant impact on her children and her family. And so I think that needs to be a priority for her at this point. As for the victim in this case, investigators have kept tight-lipped as to the child's age and how long or even when the alleged abuse occurred. But Dr. Johnson explains the victim in this case deserves unwavering support. I mean, you know, I, I will tell you, having worked with many, many victims of all different kinds of sexual uh, trauma, that the way the complaint or the report is handled can be as traumatic, if not more traumatic, than the actual offense itself, depending upon what happens. Um, there are so many things that we as a society, we as families, we as friends can do to really help that person heal. If we believe that person, if we handle that person appropriately. And there are so many opportunities, unfortunately, for that, that child to be re-traumatized if there's a lack of support, if people don't believe this person, if people don't do the things that person needs to get, to get some help. And I think that it's a real criti a critical period right now for that alleged victim to, to feel some sense of community and some sense of support. In Louisiana, a third degree rape charge could carry a sentence of up to 25 years behind bars. It's a very serious crime. And I think that it's important that it be recognized as such. And, you know, if the allegations are true, and I don't know, you know, the, the facts of the case or the details of the case yet, I, they have not come out. And I think we have a lot that we'll be learning in the future. I think there do have to be consequences for crimes. And there's a reason that there, that penalty can be so severe. And as more victims get the courage to come forward to report abuse, Dr. Johnston urges parents to have the difficult conversation and speak openly with their children. I think, you know, one of the things that just occurred to me quickly is just how important it is for us to have discussions with our boys and our girls about 
boundaries and appropriate touching and those kinds of things, because it occurred to me after I was reading the story that as much experience as I've had in the situation as someone, as a parent with two boys and two girls, I can't remember having a conversation with my boys like I had with my girls. And it was kind of a reminder to me that we need to. The former mayor, Misty Roberts, was booked into jail on August 1st, but was released after a reported 77 minutes behind bars. She was released on a $75,000 bond. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.